Pressure pull sensors have been around for a while now and they're gaining popularity in the automotive diagnostics world. And for good reason too, because they're absolutely awesome. Main use is, um, oh, there's the cat. They can be used to pick up mechanical failures like valve issues in the engine and head gasket problems and also identify piston ring issues. And we'll talk about that a bit later. So there are a few DIY videos around the internet of how to make one of these pressure pull sensors and it got me thinking uh, I could probably do it a little bit easier um, and get similar results so I thought I'd give it a go. Best of all if you've already got some of these normal household items you could probably make it for less than a dollar. In fact the sensors that I picked up worked out at 36p each. So in this video I'm going to run through the basics of the piezo sensor which is what you would use for this build and tell you a little bit about this little thing. We're going to run through the build itself. Now I've not done this before so we don't know how it's going to turn out. Hopefully it's going to work and then we'll give it a test on the car outside, see what results we get. So as I mentioned this is a really cheap build uh, with minimum uh, tool and fabrication requirements. I picked up these piezo sensors off Amazon and there's a link in the description below. You can get 10 for £3.70 UK. So yeah, it works out about 37p each. It's peanuts. Now these are really cool little things and they're actually used in a lot of places in you know everyday life like microphones, uh, drum machines. You might have seen those vibration sensors like the chassis ears kit for picking up noises around the vehicle. I imagine it uses something similar to this. And we also find this technology in diesel injectors, believe it or not. So I'm no electrical engineer, but the basic way to explain what these are, are like electron sponges. And when they get deformed or, or pressed, it actually creates a voltage. The diesel injector application is a little bit different. What they actually do is apply a voltage to the piezo stack and it expands and that's what it uses to open the injector. Okay so I'll just give you a little close-up of this sensor so on the top there it's just like a little metal disc and on the top there we've got this the piezo element itself. We've got the black wire just going to the uh, disc and the red wire going to the piezo element on the top there. So let's connect it up to the scope and have a look at what it looks like. So we're set up on the scope already. I'm set to five volt divisions and 200 milliseconds on the time base. So we're connected up here. And as we can see, look, if we, if we tap the sensor on the toolbox, we get these little spikes. Also, if we squeeze it, Let's just uh, reduce the voltage setting there. Let's go to 500 millivolts. And then if we squeeze it, we can see that we get a change in voltage. The vibration sensor, let's leave it on the toolbox there. See that? And how we're going to use it is to pick up pressure pulses. So I'm going to put it inside this lid off an aerosol can and put some pressure behind it and we should be able to see it change. So we'll do this test at 200 millivolts because it is really quite sensitive. So we've got that sensor inside the cup there. See those spikes? So it's important to know that this won't be a like a differential pressure, it is literally just the pulses that are acting on the sensor itself. Okay, so some of the other DIY sensors that I've seen on uh, YouTube, people use some like plumbing supplies and uh, gluing things together, a bit of cutting and things like that involved. And they make quite good sensors. So I did have an idea um, to use less parts and probably slightly cheaper as well. So what we're going to be using is we've got the sensor here. My idea was to use one of these kind of Tupperware type food tubs. So we're just going to drill a hole into the top of that. 
place this hose inside which we uh, got from an old camper van conversion I did it's just a bit of old gas pipe and then we'll drill another small hole in the side for the for the wires let's measure up the pipe before we get the drill out so I say we want to go to about 14 mil I've got my cone cutter here and we've got 12 and 14 so Let's go down to 12 first and see how we do. Put our pilot hole down the middle. Okay, we've got a nice snug fit there for the pipe going inside. Okay, let's drill a small hole in the side of this for the piezo sensor wires. So what you'll notice on a lot of the pressure pulse sensors that you see out there is, is a little hook on the side of it. Now that is to try and isolate the sensor from hitting anything and any vibrations. As you saw when we put the piezo element on the on the desk and tapped it, it was picking up a lot of vibrations. So what I'm gonna do is try and isolate the sensor from the actual housing and use some of this foam padding. I'm gonna stack a few layers up and then stick the sensor on top of it. Okay, so we've got a little uh, foam stack there. I'm going to place that in the middle. And I'm going to put our piezo sensor on top of it. And feed those wires through the hole there. And then we can put this on top. And as you can see, the hose is directing straight onto the top of the piezo element there. As a little quick fix, I'm just going to um, duct tape these wires down. If it all works properly, I'll probably just um, seal it up with some silicon or something. Just try and get a nice seal around those wires there. All right, so we've got the uh, basic idea of the sensor made up there. There is a, there's a little bit of a leak coming through there, but I think it should suffice for just a quick test. Okay, so let's connect up the uh, sensor to the oscilloscope. Okay, pretty good. Picking it up. Right. Okay, so let's try it on the car now. The weather's pretty bad outside, so all I'm gonna do is back up the car to the garage and we'll try it in the exhaust. Okay, so we're connected up. We've got the car backed up, much thanks to modern emission systems. Connected on the oscilloscope, we've got 50 milliseconds per division and 50 millivolts. And if we just go inside the exhaust there a bit, there we go, look at that. I'd say that was a win. Pull sensor for easily under $2. So what we were basically looking at there when we stuck that in the exhaust was the pressure pulses that were being generated when the exhaust valve opens. So the idea there is, is that you can actually monitor that versus the maybe cylinder one, so you could set up channel B to cylinder one, and then you could work out whether there were any issues with the, I suppose, the exhaust valves. So other uses for this, um, you can also do the same test in the intake. So push the pipe into the intake system, measure another cylinder, a reference cylinder on channel B, and then you can check the integrity of the intake valve system. And 
actually these two are my are my two favorite tests i think um, which are probably more um, more likely to use is if you take the dipstick out and put that onto the dipstick tube if you start getting pulses coming out of there that shows that you've got a uh, piston ring wear and then on channel b you could monitor one of the cylinders and actually work out which cylinder had the issue with the piston rings and then the other test you can do is get one of the adapters that you would use for pressurizing the cooling system put this on there run the engine and then if you're getting pressure pulses in the cooling system that indicates an issue with the uh, head gasket and there are probably many more kind of uses for this thing as well but i'm really pleased with that you know really cheap really quick to make really effective so if you don't want to go down the DIY route, there are quite a few uh, guys making these at the minute. So if you want to put the money back into technicians' pockets, uh, there's a guy called Cody's Automotive Diagnostics. Um, go and check him out. He's got a YouTube channel. Uh, Jarhead Diagnostics. Uh, it's Brandon Dills. You can check him out on Facebook as well. And he's also got a YouTube channel. And uh, in the UK, there's a guy popped up I seen the other day, Stephen Marshall, so you might be able to check him out. I'm not sure if he has got a YouTube channel or not, but uh, I see he's making them in the UK as well. So um, probably a bit better than my DIY job here. And I think they're fair priced as well.